Take on me, take on me, take me on. I'll be gone in a I want to change things around here. I want to make this, well, I want to make this. I want to know what you guys and girls want to, want to have in this show. Uh, leave it in the comments below. Meaning that, what is your interest in, in, in war game news? What do you want to know about? You know, industry news like I'm doing right now. Um, I don't know what my options are. Leave your ideas in the comments below. I will read every single one of them. Obviously, there are restrictions in terms of equipment, connections, people I can get in touch with, getting the news like that, uh, certain segments that you're gonna, that people are gonna want to have. Um, I might not be able to do, but like I said, I'm, I'm really, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try because I want to make this like the people station. You know what I'm saying? So and I, and I want you to enjoy. Your news. I don't want you to like fast forward through this, that, 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 that. It's it's about news. So leave the co leave your ideas in the comments below. Don't be ridiculous, please. And um, like I said, I'll take every option into consideration. Thank you. Saturday morning, everybody. I got a word from Phalanx Games. Actually, the CEO of Phalanx, Yaro Andruskevich, I think. And uh, so he says, hey, hello, everyone. We're getting quite a number of queries and requests from information regarding the COVID-19. So he wants to take this opportunity to assure that the entire team is fine. Nobody has been affected by the virus and they're working remotely and safely. And they are still in touch with math actors. And at the moment, they do not expect any delays in fulfilling pledges. All right. So he continues by saying with the Paris, Paris East Ludic, that's a con, UK Games Expo and Essen Spiel canceled or postponed. Um, and even events in Poland, in Poland, you won't see any of their games exhibited so they can't show off their props. Give out some review copies to people. Hopefully I get one because I'll be doing some, a new section called Unboxing. And it's actually going to be called the beauty pageant of the week or the beauty of the week, whatever. And I'll be showing a top down with my new camera. Hopefully I'll get the mic in today and um, we'll do some unboxings, check out the quality of the materials and um, hopefully get some reviews in from Germany. That is Jan Heinemann. I want him to do reviews on computer games because this guy puts out 17 computer game playthroughs a day. So who better than to do reviews on computer games than a guy who's crazy about computer games. There's a monthly quiz happening and you could win a 100 pound, oh no, euro, I should say, a 100 euro voucher on their site. So basically... Uh, it says here you can you can win 100 euros to spend in our shop. Nothing has changed since last month. Only the first attempt counts the first solution. And the person who correctly answers the most questions in the shortest time wins. So go to, to get the link on the quiz, go to phalanxgame.co. GMT Games and the P500 Batch number one shipping updates. This is as of the 2nd of June. So uh, GMT says, here's a quick update on where we are with shipping batch number one of their P500 orders. So 
they're going to be ready to begin shipping international orders, including the big Euro-friendly shipment to UGG and Second Chance Games throughout the last half of this week. They're prioritizing, prioritizing international orders because in these days of the pandemic, international orders shipping is often delayed. So they want to minimize the delay as much as they can by shipping to the international customers first, which is understandable. And you know what? You gotta love Gene if it's Gene for this. They think that they'll have a Euro-friendly shipment out the door as well as quite a few other international orders by the end of the week, not meek. So I'm trying to read fast. I mean, that's why I, it's not, I'm not like a Ted Baxter kind of guy. Okay, so we don't know exactly, he says we. We don't know exactly how long it will take to finish international shipping. We'll be tracking pack and ship numbers daily and we'll be able to quickly estimate how long this batch will take to ship once they get a sense of what they're capable of shipping on a daily basis. Once international orders are complete, they'll begin US shipping. GMT will update again early next week and we'll let you know how it's going and give you some better idea of how long this batch 1 P500 will take to complete. So tune in and I'll let you know. Thank you very much. All the best, Gene. You gotta love the guy. Something wicked this way comes through Lock and Load Publishing. I was talking with Dave and he told me, I got something wicked coming, obviously. So I said, what? And he says, are you kidding? I'm not gonna tell you. And I said, who am I gonna tell? This is a game by Anara Gupta and Jason Matthews and is a low complexity game that can be finished by experienced players in one short evening. Compass Games and Decision at Kazarine, Rommel's Last Chance Designer Signature Edition. This marks the return of a true war gaming classic by Vance Von Boris, first published in 1983. Faithfully remastered and updated with this all new supersized edition. Complexity is 6 out of 10. Solitaire suitability is 6 out of 10. There's no hidden units, variable German victory conditions. The time scale is 12 hours per turn. The map scale, 2 miles per hex. The unit scale, companies and battalions, artillery batteries, or groups. This is a 1 to 2 player game, best with. Two playing time is three to eight hours depending upon scenario. And what you get with this game are two map sheets, three counter sheets, rule booklet with updated historical notes, three player aid cards, three order of appearance display cards, access and allied, one six-sided die, and the infamous a uh, box and a lid. This game is designed by Vance Von Boris, and it is manufactured in the USA. Brief Border Wars, a game by Brian Train. This is a quadri game, meaning four games. And the four conflicts include El Salvador versus Honduras, 1969. The Turkish Invasion of Cyprus, 1974. China versus Vietnam, 1979. And Israel versus Hezbollah, Southern Lebanon, 2006. Complexity is 4 out of 10. Solitaire suitability is 5 out of 10. The time scale is variable days to weeks per turn. Map scale also is variable. It's area movement maps. Unit scale, again, variable. Battalions to division. This is a 1 to 2 player game. Plays in 1 to 2 hours. And again, is designed by Brian Train. You get 4 maps of 17 by 22 inch. 1 counter sheet. Four player eight cards, one set of 54 cards, a rule book, two six sided dice, and a box and a lid. And it's made in the USA. Stellar Horizons is a build your own space program. Lead one of seven Earth factions to explore and develop our solar system. 
designed by a real-life space engineer with a PhD in a long-duration space, space, space flight from MIT. Stellar Horizons is intended to be a plausible representation of the first steps of humanity towards the stars between 2030 and 2169. I hope to live that long, with each turn representing a year of time. Complexity is medium, time scale is one year per turn, map scale is the solar system, unit scale is manned and robotic starships, players are two to seven, I should say there's, this is a two to seven player game, solitaire suitability is high, playing time is one to 20 hours, this is designed by Andrew Rader and the graphic designs are by Andrew Rader. And the game components well i mean this is a huge list but it ends with a box and a lid but you get a rule book 20 punch board containers oh sorry but you get a rule book 20 punch board containing 231 units one invader three mission markers two turn markers eight asteroid markers 12 signs of life markers 12 pirate markers 15 Helio transfer markers, 27 trade markers, and it, I mean, it goes on. Check out the website of Compass Games, and obviously, it ends with a box in the lid. And you know, this game being that huge, check out the video now. That's one small step for man, one Stellar Horizons is a game about humanity's first steps towards the stars over the next 150 years. Designed by MIT graduate and SpaceX veteran Dr. Andrew Rader, players vie for supremacy in exploring, expanding, and exploiting resources throughout the solar system in order to dominate the space race. In Stellar Horizons, players command a faction, which represents a nation or group of nations on Earth. Through cooperative and competitive strategies, players explore and colonize the solar system, as well as develop technology to accelerate their goals. The next 150 years will see humans touch down on another planet for the first time, build settlements in space, travel to the outer reaches of the solar system, and send robotic explorers to visit planets around other stars. Stellar Horizons begins at today's level of technology, bridging the gap to an advanced space voyaging future, relying only on technologies possible within our current understanding of the laws of physics. From that early start, Stellar Horizons tracks a rapid technological development leading from today's modest means of space transport all the way to massive orbital stations safe human cryopreservation, antimatter drives, extensive planetary bases, terraforming, and even space elevators. All the solar system's planets and their major moons are featured along with asteroids, comets, and other places of interest. Gameplay takes place on tiles representing planets, dwarf planets, asteroids, moons, and other worlds. The planet tiles are arranged outwards from the sun, forming the solar system as a series of travel hubs. Moons are offshoot systems of each planetary system. Each world can be explored and most can be mined for resources or support a space settlement.
In Stellar Horizons, players begin on Earth in the year 2030, from where they must navigate their faction to victory by assembling an interplanetary presence based on political savvy, exploration, scientific research, and a weaponized fleet vying for supremacy. Each faction has unique advantages and disadvantages along with its own ship designs and bases. All factions can appear in every game, although if not managed by a human player, interactions can be limited. North America begins as the front runner on the cusp of landing humans on Mars. It is a balanced faction, adept at both robotic and human exploration, and getting a bonus for being the first to develop new technologies. Russia is the other heavyweight in historical space achievement. It slants more to the human settlement side of space exploration, relying on its expertise in space stations and benefiting from robust and determined crews. The European Union is adept at diplomacy, robotic exploration, and physics research. Its astronomy programs are unrivaled by any other faction. China benefits from the early integration of their military into their space program, a growing economy, and the ability to reverse engineer technologies developed by other factions. Japan focuses on quality over quantity with some of the best, yet most expensive, ship designs along with highly reliable robotics. Asia is a new entrant to the space race with the ability to mass produce inexpensive vessels and a focus on trade and planetary resource extraction. South America and Africa combine into a hypothetical assembly of everyone else. Based around a few key nations, this faction starts behind, but with a rapidly developing economy and technology base, a keen interest in competing in the new space race and endowed with the best equatorial launch sites on Earth. A key aspect of your faction's control of the solar system will depend upon a fleet of spacecraft. There are three types, launch, robotic, and crewed vehicles. Launch vehicles are used to carry smaller ships off planet or fling resources from base to base around the solar system, resupplying distant outposts. Robotic explorers come in several flavors. Space telescopes peer out into the cosmos or examine planets and moons in the solar system. Flyby ships zoom past their target planet, moon or asteroid taking sensor readings along the way. Orbiters get in close to survey a planet or moon or monitor atmospheric readings. Rovers land and travel along the surface of a world, increasing the chance that you'll find something valuable. Crewed vehicles do it all. They explore, trade, extract resources, build bases, and fight. Bases are the key to expanding into space beyond Earth. Built in orbit or on the surface of a world, these range from simple resupply, mining, or research outposts to thriving spaceports, dockyards, commercial hubs, and even glimmering cities in space. We hope you have enjoyed this look at Compass Games' upcoming presentation of Andrew Raider's Stellar Horizons, and we hope that you will support our Kickstarter campaign to bring this unique and outstanding gaming experience to your table. Hi, this is 
Ricardo Mazzini and uh, this week's uh, greatest day in history and games is June 6, 1944. That is Operation Overlord, the longest day, actually, the day. Uh, so, uh, Allied landings in France. There had been uh, before the advent of the raids and there uh, will be after um, Operation Dragoon in southern France, but nothing was like normally. Uh, almost 1 million of fighting personnel involved, thousands of ships, uh, the greatest fleet since the Spanish Invincible Armada of 1588, and uh, tons and tons of materials, the greatest combined uh, airborne and amphibious landing operation, a very, very good, a very great military feat, that uh, it will be almost impossible to repeat even with today's uh, logistical assets that we have at our disposal. But the battle was not easy. We all know scattered airborne landings, uh, bocage fighting, uh, fighting um, stubborn resistance on some of the beaches, and uh, you had to wait uh, some months, uh, at least uh, on July, with Operation Cobra and the effects of the Soviet Red Army Operation Bagration to have a real breakthrough. Uh, many Allied commanders feared that the landings would turn up just as had been uh, at uh, Salerno and Danzio, a bloody stalemate. Um, so, we all know something about Normandy, we have seen many great movies about it. Um, the Longest Day, The Big Red One, the good part uh, of Saving Private Ryan, that is the first 20 minutes. Uh, TV series like Band of Brothers, but what about games? Well, of course, there, there is a lot, there are a lot of very good games about Normandy. Today I want to speak about those four games. They are the what? Here we are. The four decision games, for your games about the Normandy beaches. They can be bought and played separately, or they can be combined together to have uh, the general scenario. They use the fire movement system, uh, which is a very good system. I really like it. It is uh, almost the traditional SPI quad games. Uh, system and it has been written for the reprints by the system games of those uh, SPI quads Bastogne, Arnhem, Crusade uh, and Kasserine and so on uh, very simple, very quick, uh, they are very easy to find, very cheap uh, I think under 20 dollars, 18 euros uh, so very good and also very good to introduce new buys to the basics of, uh, of wargaming very easy to get on the table limited table space and limited duration the problem is that uh, the general rule set is quite good, but the specific scenario rules or the single titles or the first titles, uh, well, they were not so good. They had balance issues, they had flaws, there were counters missing here, and, um, or confused order of battle, or orders of battle, and so on. Luckily, later titles, such as those about Normandy, were much better, much better production quality, much better development of the game, uh, of the game system, uh, good historical plausibility, so uh, much more balanced, uh, and so they are very good titles. Very small, very quick games, uh, and um, you can, uh, but they can give you a very good picture, very good general picture of the scenario. Uh, at various levels of operational simulation. So my advice is get one of them, try one of the beaches. Uh, if you like it, then get the other three, uh, get the other three titles about the, the Normandy beaches. Maybe play them together and if you really like the system, try to get the, the previous titles. You'll have to tinker a bit with rules, for example, Arnhem is very good but you have to play it with a house rule that you can find on Bogen Geek, but they are very good games for their, for their value. So, that's it, that's it for this week and Normandy, see you on the next battlefield, ciao! This is a uh, 
this is a, a, a thank you to my patrons and a thank you to Stuka Joe, whom I forgot to include in last week's news when he put out a video of the Rangers at Point to Oc by, by Dream Team designer Herman Lettman. But, you know, I guess you, you hurt the ones you love the most. Sorry, Joe. Stuka Joe, last week, he put out a video on Crowbar, the Rangers at Point to Oc. And this is a mechanics at play video where he teaches you the mechanics of the game. This is a game designed by Dream Team designers Herman Lutman and Fred Manzo, published by Flying Big Games. And we are blessed by having another video this week, again by Stuka Joe, called Juegos Amboto and the Triple Alliance War. This is a video showing an interview of Jose Martinez of Juego Amboto at the Bayota Con. It's in Spanish with English subtitles. But I just wanted to thank the people who support this channel and I wanted to show you how you're supporting me and there's going to be upgrade quality in video. I'm going to do unboxings because I have to buy stuff to do a top-down kind of thing or finagle something but I'm, I, I want to show you the camera I just got this here this is a great camera it shoots 4k so when I learn how to use it you know uh, I'm gonna put stuff up and it's got like screen stuff like this so you can see yourself but hey you know and I was waiting for I was waiting for Stuka Joe to, to, to donate generously donate some microphones and they came in so this these are it one is a transmitter and one is a receiver so basically you put this on like this and it's got a good mic on its own but Joe suggests I get some sort of lav mic and the other one you plug it into your cold shoe and about a little like something something to put on that cold shoe. so it goes right there right so it's always there and I plug it in like this and there you go that's it it's wireless is that awesome awesome for when I go to cons I'll be bringing this and interviewing people we need light, right? So, what are you gonna do? You have to buy a light. But let's say the ambient light is no good. Well, that's for people who know the filming and all that. I'll show you another piece of equipment that was bought through the generosity of supporters, 100%. I would not have been able to do this otherwise. And, it's a light! Look at that! Eh. Look at that! So I'll be filming and talking and everybody looks like this. Eh. So there's that. And again, thank you very much. Your support goes to upgrading this channel and I truly, truly appreciate it. Thank you. JK War Games is doing a review of the Battle of Ramadi, the final assault on the city, the 22nd to the 28th of December, 2015. A game published by Tiny Battle Publishing. Hey guys, Dave here. Welcome to Centurion's Review, the punk rock band of War Game Review Institutions. First game we're doing a review of this week, actually it's probably not going to be ready till Monday, is Thapsos and Alexandria from Game Fix Magazine number one. Uh, there's some ancient games uh, about two Roman battles. It's pretty simple, but it's fun. And first game we're doing a first look at on our YouTube channel is Kung Fu 2100 from Steve Jackson Games. This is a game that was out in the early 1980s and they just came out with a modern... I, I hesitate to call it a modernized version because the only thing different about it is the box and the fact that it has die cut counters, but I own the old version and never had a chance to try it, so hopefully I'll get a chance to try this one. 
And then we're doing a first look at the Slayer's Guide to Kobolds. This is a D20 game, but there's no reason why you can't use it for D&D 5th Edition or any other fantasy game. It's got all the information you would ever want about Kobolds. Probably more information than you'd ever want, so it's a good book. And then we're doing a first look at War in the Falklands from Mayfair Games. This was a controversial game back in the day because it came out right after the uh, Falklands War and some people got butthurt over it. But the uh, two scenarios in there, there's a scenario from like 100 years ago and the more modern Falklands scenario from the 1980s. They both look really simple. So the reviews of this game were pretty bad, but I'll try it and see how I like it. And then we have Operation Bader, uh, the Syrian invasion. It's uh, from West End Games. I uh, haven't tried it yet, but it looks pretty cool. And from what I've heard from people who have tried it, they liked it, even though a few people on Board Game Geek said they weren't into it. But thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys soon on our website and on our YouTube channel. Have a good evening. Swordsman Wargamer in his Play It Safe segment is playing Red Menace, the print and play version of the Solitaire game by Brank Ward. You know, the first time I heard about this game, it was through Bare Bones Wargaming. And this is a fun little game, man. It's there's an arcade quality to it because they spawn anywhere. The I mean the bad guys. I like it. Cody of the Discriminating Gamer is doing a The Discriminating Gamer live playthrough of Castle Itter, a game designed by David Thompson, and also another live playthrough of Undaunted North Africa, coincidentally, a game designed by David Thompson. Who is this guy, David Thompson? Ricardo Mazzini has three videos on Combat Commander Europe. Mo of Mo's Game Tables giving us another video on storage tips, part two, and also he's reviewing Rogue State from Tiny Battle Publishing. The man famously known as Callendale is giving us a playthrough of Compass Games Stellar Horizon, a game designed by Andrew Raider, a Canadian native, I might add, and obviously published by Compass Games. Todd! The itinerant hobbyist, the Hugh Hefner of War Games, because of his role, obviously, is playing Lock and Load Tactical Live with the CEO of the Big Board, Kevin Sharp, and the OG, the original Grognard, Devin, in his quest to play six D-Day games by June 6th in honor of those who fought in battle. You want to know what's happening on the Big Board? I'll tell you what's happening on the Big Board. The CEO is continuing his great campaigns of the American Civil War, Atlanta is Ours, a game designed by Ed Beach, Mike Bellis, and Chris Withers, published by Multi Man Publishing. The Chief, Bart, of Bonding with Board Games, has a video out on Bart the Chief Rambles about games and ham tag. Tim Korchnoy of Barrar Bowen's Wargaming is playing not war, but murder. The opening moves, a game designed by Michael Ranella, published in the magazine Against the Odds. And Compass Games will be live with John Krantz and Brian Train. Ardwolf of Ardwolf's Lair is unboxing Red Storm, the air war over central Germany, 1987, a game designed by Douglas Bush on a system by Lee Birmingham Wood, and he also continues his campaign of a hot, dry season, Operation Attleboro, 
Vietnam 1966, Part 2. AJ Toynbee of Hexes and Soldiers is playing a 1977 game by Avalon Hill, Fury in the West, but it's different. You gotta check it out. Seek Out and Play is giving us a introduction and overview of the second edition of D-Day Dice. This is a game I played with my fiance for a year every Saturday morning. And the channel that calls itself Simple History, Learn History in No Time, has an episode on the Corinthian Helmet. Canvas Temple Publishing and Stalingrad Solitaire, a solitary board game of the Battle of Stalingrad during the Second World War. Stalingrad Solitaire is a solitary game simulating the last weeks of the encircled German 6th Army in the pocket German troop nicknamed the Cauldron that formed in and out to the west of the city of Stalingrad when Soviet troops broke through the Wehrmacht front lines of December 1942. The base game components, or I should say the base game contents, are a sheet of three-quarter die-cut double-sided full color counters, one 17 by 22 inch map sheet, a book of rules, and a player aid cards. The base game will be published in folio format if only the base funding goal is achieved. The gentlemen of the player's aid are reviewing Redver's Reverse from Legion War Games. Now that's a confusing name. Also unboxing Shiloh 1862 from Worthington Publishing and Unboxing Stellar Horizons from Compass Games. It's impossible. I have to say something, and I'll say nothing, and that says everything. Gimpe of the Gimpy Gamer is continuing Conflicts of Heroes, Storms of Steel, Campaign 3 Part 10, and also giving us a Victory and Glory Boot Camp 12 Naval Transport and playing The Order of Vampire Hunter. The wise guy, Nathan, gives us a guide to Operation Overlord War Games, D-Day Normandy, the 6th of June, 1944. Julius Fairfax gives us a playthrough of Pacific War, a game by Mark Herman, published by Victory Games. Jan Heinemann of Let's Play History! Besides all the other games that he's doing, he is playing Expedition Vikings. Now. I'm trying to get Jan on this channel, just like Ricardo, to do a weekly segment. Jan knows computer games, war games, therefore, it's news. I want Jan, please. I want Jan. He's thinking about it. Let's give him a bit of pressure. I want Jan. Counterproductive games. Let's talk about ultra combat. Normandy. He says here no gameplay yet, just dust this one off so we can start learning it. And he asks, have you played it before? What are your thoughts? At Board Games is unboxing Knights of Fire Battle for Budapest. Designed by Brian Train and David Turkzy, published by Mighty Boards. Wayne Hansen. Let's play D-Day Omaha Beach Beach to Bocage Tutorial. This is a game designed by Eric Harvey, published by Decision Games. Tough spoken but formidable foe! Jonathan Townsend plays The Battle of Abensburg by Keith Poulter. This is an old strategy and tactics magazine game. And that's that. And the man who goes by the name of Jeff gives us an overview of Battlestar Galactic. Stephen Dolges cracks open Invasions Volume 1 unboxing 350 to 650 AD The Barbarian Invasions of Europe in the Dark Ages by Wisdom Owl. <music> Worthington Publishing and Dawn of Battle, a game by Mike Nagel. Dawn of Battle is a hex and counter war game allowing players to refight historical battles from 
1500 BCE to 1500 CE or 3000 years of combat. What you get with this game is a hardbound and 22 by 34 inch game board, that is, a game board, three to five sheets of die cut counters, two play rate cards, 80 marker cubes, two decks of 17 cards each, plastic bases, rule book, scenario book, and counter trick. Could you believe it? There's an event planned. Compass Expo 2020, November 5th to 9th. 2020 at Comfort Inn and Suite in Meriden, Connecticut, where you'll have Monster Games on Opening Gaming. Oh, sorry, Monster Games and Opening Gaming, designer hosted playtest sessions, game demonstration, Euro Games, tournament play, seminars, buffet breakfast, Compass Games exhibitor hours for on site sales, special attendee discounts, free parking, and just a heck of a good time. It's great to have an expo or a con back. shellacking's worth of videos the first one being episode 113 where he discusses discusses sixth fleet also 114 would be the blitz 115 story of board gaming in italy and 116 is a special podcast of normandy another week another show and let me tell you and i don't have to tell you that this has been a hell of a week all you have to do is go on social media and you'll know what's going on. And I, I, I know this is this no enemies here. I hope it's an escape from all of that, though some of these issues need to be addressed. And, you know, Gilbert Tostave, what a nice guy. He's a supporter of mine. We frequently email each other, and we talk about issues. And uh, I'm just, I'm just so glad that this wargaming community is a little family. Yeah, people make mistakes. I make mistakes like crazy. And um, it's funny how the real people stick together and weed out the phonies and all that. Because there are lots and lots of people who who are in it for themselves and are phonies. But anyways, like I said, I hope this is a an escape from all of that. And thank you very much to my supporters. Please support this channel. Also, subscribe and like or not like. That's okay. Everybody's got an opinion, which I think is great. Be safe and um, be safe, okay? Take care. Love your family. Ciao.